I have a problem. I have too many letters to edit. What am I talking about? Well, over here I've got a document that I would like to send to my clients asking them to confirm their details. But if I would like to make a lot of money, it's probably a good idea that I have a lot of clients. But if I have a lot of clients, it means I have to do this letter for each and every one of them. In other words, I'll have to print this letter and then for the next client, change the name, change the address, change the details, and then print that one. And then for the third client, do the same and so on and so on. And that's going to take me a very long time. If only there was a way that it would magically do it, like the Mr. Long way or the Mail Merge way. What we're going to do here is use a feature in Word called Mail Merge. And what we need before we do this is obviously the information that we want to put into this document. Now I've got a spreadsheet over here which has all the information I need for my letter for each of those clients. So there's each client's details, their cell phone number and address and so on and that's what I want to put into my letter. You'll notice that the first row is the headings for each column for what that information is about. So yeah I've got my spreadsheet so I've got it stored somewhere so I'm going to come to my Word document and in five easy steps I'm going to magically combine this document with the information from that spreadsheet. First place I need to go to is the mailings toolbar. Now step number one, I need to start the mail merge. As you can see there are lots of options you can use. You can mail merge with labels or envelopes. In this case we're creating a letter so I'm going to select the letter option. Next we need to tell Word where to get the information to put into this document. We already have it in a spreadsheet but if you don't you can go to select recipients and use the top new list option. In our case we already have the information in a spreadsheet so we're going to use existing list. And then we just got to find where that list is. So I'm going to go find where it is. There's my spreadsheet and I select it. It asks me for which worksheet to use and also just to confirm that the first row is the headings. Click OK. Now step number three. We now need to tell Word where to put those fields in what position. For example we want the name to always go over there. We want the surname to always go over there. Now over here we've got the insert merge field and if you click on the arrow you can see all of the headings that were in my spreadsheet are now listed over here. So now I can just use these to populate this document. So for example instead of Bruce we are now going to put in the name. Instead of banner, we are now going to put in the surname. Over here, we'll probably have to do the address. So let's put in address 1 and address 2. And this will obviously be address 3. And then obviously we need the personal details over here. So the client ID, which we can get from that detail. We need the cell phone number. and we need the contract type. You'll notice there's also age which we're not going to use in our document. We don't have to use everything that's in the spreadsheet. So we can't manually type in those brackets with the word name for it to work. These are actual special merge fields. When you click on them you see how they turn gray. They are special fields which you have to insert using that step 3 option. Okay, now Step four, once we are happy with where all our merge fields are going to go, we just, before we start making our document, just need to make sure that it looks right. So we're going to preview the results. This is step four. Click on preview and it only shows me the first document. It only shows me one. So I can see is everything where I want it to be? Is the information correct? Yes. You can see if I click on Bruce and Banner, you can see it, it turns gray. That is because it's combined with a merge field. Yes, I'm happy with this. That's what I want it to look like. So I can undo the preview results by just clicking on that. That was step four. Now I'm happy. Now before I move on to step five, it's probably a good idea to save this because what's going to happen is if I do the merge, it's going to give me a whole new document with all the merge fields combined. And if I ever want to make modifications to it, instead of modifying all 20 letters that will be generated, I can just come change this template and do the merge again. So step number five, how do I get my letters done? I go to over here to the merge and finish. You click on the option and we want to edit the individual letters. Now once I click on that, it will ask me do I want to do all the records or just the current record or maybe I just want to do the last five. In that case I'll go from 15 to 20. So I'm going to do all of them so I'm going to click OK. And here we can see we've got a whole new document called Letters 2 and in it you'll see all the details have been put in 
where I want them to be. Now you could say that's just for one, but if you look at the bottom there, you see it's page one of 20. That's because if I go down, there is the second person. If I go further, this is the third person. And you can see Cassandra, if I go to my spreadsheet, third person was Cassandra. So Cassandra's details is in my letter. Now I have 20 letters that all have the information in for me without me having to manually type it. So that's awesome. So it's a lot quicker to do, a lot easier. Um, just a little thing to take note of. We're going to obviously save this because this is a separate document. So we're going to save our letters. We're going to save it in that same folder so that we don't lose it. So I'm going to put it in my mail merge folder. So this is, I'm going to call this my final letters. So I can print that later and then not have to worry about individually changing all of them. Just a little step as well. When we did the selecting recipients, we used a spreadsheet. You can also use a um, database, and I've got all that information in a access database over here. So he has the client's details. It's exactly the same as what it was in the spreadsheet. The advantage of a database, however, is if, for example, we only wanted to find or write the letters to the people who are in Newtown North in, with contract A, then you can run a query and yeah, we've got a query with only um, the contract type A and the people living in Newtown North. And we can then do a merge with just the query. So we just get the letters for that part. So it just provides a few more extra options. Okay, so just refresh. To do a mail merge, we go to the mailings toolbar. We start the mail merge. So you start, you pick which one you want. You get the data where you, where you get the information from. Once you've done that, you will insert the merge fields of where you want that data to appear in the document. Preview it just to make sure that it's all in the right place. And final step is to finish and merge.